Hi, everyone, and welcome to AFI Fest 2020, presented by Audi. My name is Malin Khan, and I'm a programmer with the festival. Before we begin, I just want to thank all of our supporters, our presenting sponsor, Audi, our AFI members, as well as you, our audience. Thank you so much for tuning into this extremely special virtual edition of AFI Fest. Um, here with me today is KJ Matthews, who will be moderating our discussion. KJ is an Emmy and Peabody Award winning entertainment journalist. She's written, produced, and reported for CNN, Extra TV Show, the BBC, ABC, Fox, CBS, Germany's leading DW English TV network, and Australia's ABC TV network, among others. Thank you so much, KJ, for leading this discussion, and I will let you introduce our guests. Thank you. Well, once again, AFI, thank you so much for having me lead this discussion. I really appreciate it. And thank you for allowing all the people who are attending the AFI uh, Film Festival to uh, be engaged with this wonderful film, uh, Farewell and More. And without further ado, I'd like to get started, introduce the wonderful filmmaker and the cast of the film. First up uh, is Ekwa uh, Msange. Now, you guys can completely uh, correct me <laughs> if I get the names wrong, but I want to get right into it. Um, she is a Tanzanian-American filmmaker who has written and directed for television and film, including her feature directorial debut, Farewell and More as well as several drama series for mainstream broadcasters in Kenya and South Africa. Ekwa has been awarded the Jerome Foundation Grant and Tribeca Institute and Sundance Institute Fellowship. So let's welcome her. Uh, next up, I want to make sure there's a lot of names here. I get it right. Is it Intare? Intare? <laughs> Intare, Guma, uh, Mbawe, Mwai. I'm somewhere, I'm hoping I'm somewhere correct. He plays the father in this film and uh, he is a dual citizen of Uganda and United States working in the mediums of photography, theater, film, and television. His feature film acting credits include Blood Diamond and The Shy. Uh, you feel free to pronounce it if I, if I margled the name. <laughs> oh, my name is Ntare Guma Mbaho Mwine. Perfect, you do it better than I ever could. So thank you for that correct pronunciation, beautiful name. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Jamie Lawson. Now, Jamie is making her acting debut in Farewell and More as Sylvia. In 2019, she gained international attention when she was cast uh, in the upcoming film, The Batman, as Bella. So let's welcome her. <laughs> Yay. And last but not least, is it Zainab Ja? Am I anywhere near correct? Zainab. Zainab. Ja. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> she plays a mother, uh, and she is a British award-winning theater, television, and film actress of Sierra Leone descent. She is mostly known for her on and off Broadway performances as Mema in the Broadway play Eclipse, Venus, and Schoolgirl, among others. Without further ado, let's get started. Uh, Ekwa, I want to start with you because it was your vision uh, behind this. I understand that this film is really inspired by true events in your life. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us. The film is inspired by a relationship between my aunt and my uncle, my, uh, who were married in the mid-90s. My uncle came to the U.S., um, 96, 97, when, you know, about a year after they had been married, their child was about five months old. And um, he had every intention of bringing my aunt and cousin right behind him. And to date, 2020, they're still working on visas, still petitioning, um, but still hopeful that one day they'll be reunited. So, you know, this question, you know, I've seen the way that their lives have been shaped due to this event due to them not having visas and this mountain that they've been climbing for, you know, two decades yeah. um, in terms of trying to have their family be together and what they've imagined their family to be. So I wanted to write the, well, what if story? What if the visa wasn't the issue anymore? What if they finally were able to get their visas and reunite, then what would happen? Um, so that's where the inspiration came from. Wow. Um, many people might not know, but you were actually born in the U.S., am I correct? Um, Correct. Yes. I mean, but then you immigrated back to Africa. So talk to me about how that really um, kind of changes the narrative and really colors everything you see as a filmmaker. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I I come from my my parents were Fulbright scholars um, at Stanford and Mills College and California College of Arts and Crafts in the seventies and early eighties, um, and so I'd grown up hearing stories of Africa and. You know, there was a big African student union, you know, of students who were around at Stanford. So I, you know, my, I had these big, very lofty dreams of what Africa was like and, you know, moved back as a young child, five years old. Um, and it was important to my father at the time. My father was an artist and wow. he wanted me to grow up in Africa so that I would know, so that I would know Africa and not know it from the perspective of other people. Um, so as a filmmaker, that's very much a big um, influence for me is, you know, understanding how much other people and also ourselves in Africa, because of the lack of content that we have, because we don't get to see ourselves reflected that often, we tend to see ourselves through the lens of other people. Um, a lot of our programming, a lot of our stories are told by other people about us. You know, and so it's a very personal mission of mine to tell our own stories of ourselves. Um, and so for me, most of that just begins with talking about the people that I know, which are my family, my, my family members. I have a very large family um, that I come from. And so I literally could, you know, go on for days and days just telling stories only about my family. Um, but I think it's important for us to be able to reimagine ourselves and our own narratives because you know that's not something that we really have had the the power to do for a long time you know when i was watching the film i i loved it first of all um and i loved it for a number of reasons but one of the reasons is as a, a black american uh, growing up obviously in america never lived in any other country uh, permanently for a long time rather um I really haven't seen that many stories about immigrants um, that involve black people. I've seen yeah. stories that involve Asian immigrants. I've seen stories that involve immigrants from India. I've seen stories that involve immigrants from Mexico. But very mm -hmm. rarely have I seen the immigrant story turn from, uh, told from rather an African perspective. And I just, I just love that. I'm wondering, um, when you decided to tell this story, did you ever have any pushback because people weren't used to seeing the African story uh, be told through the immigrant experience? Yeah, not so much pushback about them being immigrants, but um, unfortunately, most stories, most big films about Africans that tend to get funding uh, traditionally, um, if they don't involve white people finding themselves in Africa against an African backdrop. Um, if it involves African people, it tends to be either about like the most famous African that you've ever heard of, uh, you know, the five Nelson Mandela movies, <laughs> or <laughs> you know, right. like the most exceptional African, you know, like the one boy who, you know, learned how to make windmills out of of whatever, which those are great stories, or it's the tragedy story, which is, you know, the child soldier, the Boko Haram, the FGM, the, you know, sort of like the issue driven story. Um, and it's, it's been interesting. It's been an interesting journey to find pushback on that, where it's more about, you know, again, there've only been certain ways that African people have been discussed. And so people tend to be like, well, who are, who are the people who don't have issues? and who are not huh. the most amazing, exceptional Africans that ever lived. Like, where, where do those people live? Right. <laughs> We've never heard of those people. And so it, it, was, um, it was exciting to be able to tell that story um, and exciting to be able to, to present that um, story to audiences and have people be like, oh, okay, that's exactly like my Italian grandma or my you know, Polish cousin or, you know, whatever, you know, they're, they're not, I think these characters are not limited to African narratives in any way. And that was partly the point. <laughs> That's great. Let's bring the cast in. Um, I want to find out how each of you uh, got this part and how you guys prepare for it. Let's start with you, Jamie. I, uh, I had uh, just graduated and um, the casting director for the film, Rebecca Daly, um, brought me in her office and, you know, she asked me, uh, do you have any experience with um, the step team or, or are you really good with like, 
different African dialects. And like I've said before, I mean, you say yes to that because you're trying to get booked, you're trying to <laughs> get any role ever. Um, and so, you know, I naively said yes. And she then brought me in to audition for this role. And when I got the script, um, I, was, I was so drawn to it because of how nuanced it was. Um, and again, like Equa mentioned, it was telling the African immigrant um, narrative in a different way than I've, I've never seen or even read. Like a lot of the books that you read about, you know, different immigrants from coming from Africa and coming here or going wherever, it, there's always some blown up strife or issue driven thing like I mentioned. Um, and so I was really drawn to Sylvia and the story. And so, yeah, I went in and that's how I got to, you know, I, can't, I went in and auditioned and that's how I got to be a part of, part of this. Yeah. You did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. Oh, really thank you. <laughs> Zainab, or would you like to? Yes, um, well, I pretty much came through the same way that Jamie did. I was called into audition for it. And um, again, I was drawn to the script because um, for the past few years, I have been doing a lot of African stories <laughs> on stage specifically. And it was nice to do something on film um, of a family and not, you know, the stories we've heard over and over again, the, the child soldier, the FGM issue, just, a, a, just a, I just wanted to do this wonderful family drama and a subject matter that I can relate to because I am also from an Im African immigrant family, born and raised in London, went to Sierra Leone, came back and just meeting my family for the first time at the age of 10, you know, like, right. I mean, the last time I'd seen my mom, I was six months old. The next time I saw her, I was 10 and a half years old. And so I was really drawn to that story. And I thought, oh, I definitely, I can relate to pretty much everyone in this movie. And um, I wanted to be part of it. So that's how I got involved. Great. All right. Ntare. My name's Ntare. Ntare, yeah. I could... I'll play the role of Walter. And um, I... I've been a huge fan of Equas for a long time because we both um, had films at previous festivals together. I'm also a director. Oh, yeah. And I was always chatting her up, finding out what she has next and campaigning to be in whatever project she's going to be doing. And she came up with a short film version of this and had approached me to play the role of Walter in that short film. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to to do it at the time mm -hmm. uh, and was grateful when um, she came back to me with a, a chance to, to do the film uh, and really pushed for me to be a part of it. And I just feel lucky to be here talking to you guys and have been a part of the film. You did phenomenal. All three of you guys were phenomenal uh, actors and actresses, and I really, really enjoyed uh, watching the film. Um, Ekwa, can you talk to me a little bit about the music and the soundtrack and how you chose it? Yes. Um, I, uh, I do have a background in dance, uh, both Kizomba and Kuduro, which are the two styles that Walter and Sylvia's characters respectively um, perform in the in the film and the and the music is very much a part of the dance you know there's kizomba dance that you dance to kizomba music and so for a lot of it you know a lot of it was top of the pops kizomba and top of the pops kuduro things that i loved you know i did a lot of research and you know we had a wonderful choreographer manuel kanza who is angolan and is based in angolan through the grace of God, happened to be in New York for the summer <laughs> when we were working on this. So he was also a wonderful resource in terms of being able to find sort of who is new and happening and, you know, hot in the streets as far as um, actors, I mean, sorry, musicians were concerned. Um, and, you know, because the music is of a different culture and a different language. Uh, I'm not from Angola, I've never been there and I don't speak Portuguese. So in terms of getting the music, you know, liking the music is really easy. You can find all of it on YouTube, um, but getting licensing for it, it was like a completely different um, project. And so, you know, not everybody is represented, um, you know, by a distribution company. And so we did a lot of 
Instagram stalking and Facebook stalking, <laughs> Google <laughs> translation of, uh, you know, I love your music so much and I'm an independent filmmaker in New York and this is the story and this is what we're trying to do. And, you know, and people just believed us and believed in the work that we were doing. And, um, you know, there were a few of us, the few people who were wondering who we were and, you know, Manuel was able to sort of you know, convince them that, you know, he was, con you know, he was joining us. And as we got a few people to join, it sort of, you know, we were able to be like, well, we're working with this person and that kind of convinced other people to join us, which was really beautiful. But at the end of the day, I mean, they all came on as collaborators, really every musician, and we have so many of them, and they're just all wonderful, wonderful musicians. They all, each one of them came on as collaborators who believed in the story and loved loved the story and wanted to participate. What do you all want uh, the audience to take away from this film? Because it is a, a different type of, of immigrant, uh, a retelling of the immigrant story. So I'm wondering what you all hope the audience walks away with once they see this film. Mm. Any one of you can take that question. <laughs> I particularly, I, I have very simple needs. I want to, them to walk away realizing that we're more alike than we are different. Yeah. You know, mm. we have more in common than not. So that's one thing I would love for them to walk away realizing. Anyone else, Ekwa? You know, there's so many things that I'm proud of um, for this film, just, you know, as I said, as I mentioned before, just wanting to tell a different kind of story about Africans, African people, um, and also just really excited about all of the collaborators. I mean, the three actors that we have here, um, whose work I feel like is completely underrepresented in, you know, on our screens, you know, amazing amazing talents and i'm just so excited to have them be able to show j their chops in this film um as well as you know a lot of the other actors that we had involved and and the musicians and you know just all the collaborators we have and that's another thing that i'm really excited to be able to show this as you know a strong piece of work to demonstrate who we are and to be able to say something about ourselves uh, before we wrap up, I would love to, I'd be remiss without asking you guys, you know, we're living in interesting times. Obviously, we're in the midst of a pandemic and our, our country is having a, a racial reckoning. Um, and I'd like to know as artists particularly, for this question is for each of you, has that changed the kind of work that you want to do in the future? Are you now looking at uh, the type of work that you sign on to or the type of work that you're producing or writing uh, differently because of the times that we're living in? You know, it's funny um, because though this country is having a racial reckoning, as you say, uh, I, I've been see, seeing and living with a lot of the things that some people in this country are just now starting to wake up to. And so for me, um, it more so ignites everything that I set out to do when I decided to become an artist anyway. Um, it gave more of, uh, I mean, it was such, Farewell Amour is amazing to say that, that was the first film that I got to be a part of because here, uh, Equa gave me the opportunity to have a young girl have agency over her life, um, which is rare. We don't get to see a lot of young women of color have any agency or say over their lives or, or uh, they're always being saved by somebody else or as, as women, they're carrying everyone else, right? Um, and so what a blessing it was to be a part of this as my first project um, mm -hmm. because it just, it, again, it ignites, it ignites everything that I wanna do of, of telling um, the stories of young black women, of young black girls, um, and fighting for that agency. Um, mm. And it, I'm glad that now more people are waking up to it to recognize that that is, as, that is necess necessary. Right. Um, so, and then also the meaning of the importance of connection. Now with the pandemic, we're all learning how much we need 
personal human connection. Oh my God, uh, yes. And this film, again, uh, we had, we did uh, another interview a couple months back and uh, the DP, um, Bruce, he had mentioned how a film like this in this climate couldn't be done right now. The nature of how intimate the filming process was even, you couldn't, you couldn't achieve what, um, what Equa and Intara and Zainab did on this. You couldn't, you couldn't do it now. Um, so this film feels like, it feels really special to me in that respect because, you know, I got the, the honor and the opportunity to have two things um, very early on that are very important and dear, given wow. the climate. Um, yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> what about you, uh, Intara? Uh, I think this is a classic love story. So I think if I'd ask anyone to take away from, away from this would be, yeah, it's, this is a, a window into a, an African love story told with a backdrop of Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> what better place to have it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and in terms of like speaking to, you know, speaking to the times, you know, love, love will conquer also. Uh, what better time to share a story than to share a love story right now where people work through their differences and, and come to a greater understanding and compassion for one another. And I think that's what this story does. Beautifully put, beautifully put. Well, on that note, um, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for participating in this q and I hope everyone learned a lot from it. Please, please, please make sure if you see any film this year, you see Farewell and More. Beautifully shot, beautifully acted, beautifully written, beautiful all around. around. Thank you so much for participating. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you AFI.